I can feel it coming. It's that time again. It's those old goofy goblins. Welcome to Goofs and Goblins, the tabletop role-playing anthology. The podcast where a group of friends play short-form, complete campaigns of different RPGs. My name's Hammer Gibbons, and I'm going to be running you through this first game. In Dungeons & Dragons, you have what's called a DM, or Dungeon Master. Uh, a lot of other games have a GM, which stands for Game Master. Uh, our games are all going to have a, a rotating Goof Master. And for this first arc, I'm going to be your Goof Master. Uh, our first game is a Western-themed game in the style of Sergio Leone's Spaghetti Western Films. Uh, we're using a homebrew system created by Fantasy Flight Games Forum member Brash Fink called Edge of the Union. Brash Fink used Fantasy Flight Games Edge of the Empire Star Wars system to make his homebrew, and our game will be using the Edge of the Empire specialty dice. You've heard of D&D, but if you're not familiar with how role-playing games work, they're a collaborative storytelling experience where each person assumes the role of a single character and makes choices for that character. One other person, the Game Master, or Dungeon Master in D&D, assumes the role of the environment, the narrative, and all the other characters their players meet, and provides challenges and obstacles for them to overcome. Conflict resolution is achieved through the rolling of dice to simulate uh, random chance and consulting numbers on a character sheet. Things like strength, dexterity, or skill at operating vehicles, depending on the system and setting. Many of these systems have a target number that gets higher based on difficulty, and... The players want to roll above that number to succeed at their attempted task. In the system we're using, we have a set of special dice with different symbols on them. Success, failure, advantage, and disadvantage. Success and failure cancel each other out, and advantage and disadvantage determine with what degree your action was successful or unsuccessful. So this is where the fun comes in, because it allows for outcomes such as an advantageous failure, where even though you failed, you still received some kind of windfall. Perhaps you missed the stormtrooper with your blaster bolt, but you hit the control panel behind him and shut him away in a different room. What's really cool is that these are easy to calculate, and they're non-binary, and so it's a really quick, cinematic style of storytelling, and it works really great for Star Wars. And our hope is that it will also work really well for the spaghetti western style of the Sergio Leone films. The system also utilizes what are called destiny points, and in Star Wars they represent the ebb and flow of the light side and dark side of the Force. And so they're a resource that um, you roll for at the start of each session, and uh, you've got uh, either a light side or a dark side point, and you can flip one if you're one of the characters. You can flip a light side point to influence the story in some way, add in a little detail that wasn't there before, or or increase the likelihood of you succeeding at something. Uh, on the flip side, once you flip it to a dark side point, or if you roll dark side points at the beginning, the game master can flip these to make something more difficult for you, or, you know, change some detail at their whim. So it's, it's representative of the force, and also it's a way for the player and the game master to influence the narrative. And so we're also going to be using those, even though this is an Old West game and there is no the force, uh, it's a fun mechanic, and so we kept it. Our game takes place in the fictional town of Baker's Hill around the year 1870. There are three players, Zach Johnstone playing as Annabelle Morell, a southern belle with a heart of gold. I've had a stranger. Tran Duong, playing the ether-addicted doctor, Sam Goodwin. Hey there, sugar. And Matt Gordon, playing Huddle St. Patrick, an Irish cowboy just looking to make a buck. Top of the morning to ya. So sit back and let us spin you a yarn. Welcome to our first arc, Campfire Tales. It was a bright and sunny day in the middle of Baker's Hill. Everybody was wondering what everybody was up to. This is just a town where everyone's immediately in everyone else's business. <laughs> from, <laughs> hey from guys, what are you up to? to sundown. There's people you, you popping guys, in. Yeah, what are you up to? What's everybody up to? So uh, I, we went over to Huddle St. Patrick on a regular day. We could see what he was up to, and it is as follows. Huddle rode into town on his horse. He hadn't been to Baker's Hill. He uh, was coming in for the first time, 
and he is looking around. Compelling. Huddle St. Patrick came in uh, just after the dawn had risen, rode in with the sun itself out of the east. As soon as somebody rides into town, the first thing they're going to see is the uh, the old general store run by the Wong family right next door to the Southern Gentleman Cajun Kitchen, which admittedly was not open yet. Well, if it is early in the morning, it is prime time for a drink. So he went to the bar, the saloon, the <laughs> casino, the watering hole. <laughs> it's 9 a.m., prime time for a drink. <laughs> Gotta get my drink. In. <laughs> well, Huddle has very obviously rode, rode through the night to get here at the crack of dawn. So his <laughs> his your morning is his late night snack and his late right. night snack of I choice know. is whiskey <laughs> huddle uh searched far and wide for a bar wasn't one to be found till he got near the end of town found a big old casino bigger than what he'd expected in a little crossroads town like this but it'd suffice casinos always had liquor he stepped inside, his dusty boots echoing on the wooden ground. He rolled perception. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, let me see. Perception is two green and one yellow. It was a three difficulty perception. You notice these details. <laughs> I was chewing gum and almost swallowed it. <laughs> Yeah, you got a success and a disadvantage. Cool. He stepped inside. The bright glare of the sunlight made it difficult for his eyes to adjust, but only for a minute. And I definitely saw booze. Before long, <laughs> his eyes focused on the booze behind the bar. But that wasn't all he noticed. This casino, big as it was, was uh, built like a timber box. Rickety, drafty, and ready to crumble. Whoever built this place wasn't a, a, a fine craftsman. Clearly, he was doing it on on the cheap to make a buck. Well, I better be careful to not set this place on fire. He thought. <laughs> <laughs> As he thought when he walked into any building. Uh, y- yeah. Because fire. He hated <laughs> fire. Um, so Huddle went up to the, uh, the bar. Behind the bar was a uh, a pretty well built woman, a a bit a, a a bit up there in the years, but sturdy, strong. He could see her broad shoulders. If anybody was the muscle around this place, it so was when her. you say well built, you mean like uh, bodybuilder, not like stacked supermodel. Yes, I mean gotcha. bodybuilder. Okay. Uh, cool. Um. Do they have chewing gum in 1870? Ah, uh, highly doubtful. I don't know. I would die. It's probably tobacco if you really want it. Yeah. Um, so... Huddle, Huddle went up to the bar and... You know what, guys? Humans have used chewing gum in some form for at least 100,000 years, according to Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, didn't people use, like, take stuff from the gum tree and just chew on that? Yeah. Huh. Um, but I mean, like double bubble probably wasn't super prevalent. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck wrong with you? <laughs> I don't think I don't think anyone was smacking That's on Wrigley's or anything. Wrigley's, Wrigley's, Wrigley's brothers. Wrigley's. <laughs> Is it not Wrigley's? <laughs> it's Wrigley's. It's Wrigley's. <laughs> yeah, Wrigley Scott. <laughs> well, that makes even less sense. Hey Matt, just well, to let you know, Wrigley's been around for 18, since 1891. Yeah, Wrigley's Wrigley's chewing gum since 1981. Well, I guess it's the maybe it's not the chewing gum, but Wrigley's the company. But how long has Wrigley's chewing gum been around? That's the real question. William Simple filed an early patent on chewing gum, patent number 98,304, on December 28th, 1869. Oh yeah, when's this take place? This is 1870. So yeah, she's chewing. Uh, he gets up to the bar. <laughs> the uh, the well-built woman behind it is chewing on some chewing gum. Awesome. 
Um, no, little more than sap from a tree, but it does her just fine. <laughs> uh, so Huddle uh, saddles up to the bar, and uh, he said, Top of the morning to you. Would you be happening uh, to be serving breakfast anytime soon? Gotta go hide oh, away. there, cowpoke. Did you just roll in from Ireland? Uh, not quite that far <laughs> east. Is that her chewing gum? Yeah. No, she was just crunching on ice, it sounds like. <laughs> it's like she's, she's masticating gravel. Remember, it's bark from a tree. So. Wait, bark or sap? <laughs> it's bark. It's just straight. That's not. That's nowhere near gum. She's a tough old broad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It's just like it's like str- a branch of mesquite is like sticking out of her mouth. <laughs> she extended a hand. My name's Rosie. I run the bar here at the Double Dixie. All kinds of folks come through here. I done heard that accent for. You're from Ireland. I know it. <laughs> uh. Well, you're not mistaken, ma'am, but I've been spending most of my life here in the States. Uh, yeah, we, I, uh, we don't have a whole lot of food here at the Dixie. Uh, if you're looking for something to eat, you'll probably want to head over to the Southern Gentleman. They should be open in about an hour or so. I could get you a drink till then. Uh, that sounds lovely. A whiskey, please. I could have guessed. Well, fuck you then. I'll take a bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's about that time thing. that Rosie reached under the bar, pulled up a, a classic Scotch whiskey for the Irishman. She said, uh, "Here's the one that uh, Father O'Patrick enjoys. Probably be one of your favorites too." Slid it over to him. Uh, great. I'll just drink until I can get food in my stomach. Okay, uh, so, um, he enjoyed his drink in peace. Anyway, stranger, I don't think I caught your name. Oh, uh, the name's St. Patrick. Huddle St. Patrick. Oh, that's a bit of a racist name. Nice to meet you, I'm Rosie. I think I already said that, but just in case. Yeah, yeah, you did. Uh, are you the only person running this establishment? Well, till it gets a little darker, it is nine in the morning. Well, it just looks like you've been working through the night, and that might be why you introduced yourself twice in the space of two minutes. <laughs> no, just setting up shop. Also, I have a post-traumatic stress disorder, and it makes me lose my short-term memory. Well, shit. How did... That's quite a diagnosis. Yeah, it's not even a phrase they'll invent for some hundred years, but <laughs> there it is. All right, then. I'm going to crawl back into this bottle, because, to be quite honest, you're using a lot of $5 words I'm not familiar or comfortable with. Well, it's a very fancy casino. (laughs) Anyway, this is a coherent story. (laughs) You should head over to the restaurant next. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so Huddle picks up his whiskey bottle and walks out to the restaurant. Huddle stepped outside into the blazing sun. It was even higher and hotter than when he had first gone into the casino. Hearing about this restaurant, he headed down the road to find the southern gentleman the one time in his life that he couldn't wait to be greeted by a southern accent. Um, I'll have you know that Huddle has spent a lot of time in New Orleans and he finds southern antebellum stylings quite uh, delightful. Who's the narrator of this story? (laughs) Before long, he sidled on in to the southern gentleman. Huddle St. Patrick stepped through the door, and it was there that he saw the most Annabelle woman he had ever seen. She looked like the following description that will follow. She was female. She, she was 5'8", with brown hair, put up in an updo, brown eyes, and mousy-like features. But she wasn't unattractive. In fact, she had plenty of presents. Oh, my. <laughs> she had plenty of the stat known as presents. <laughs> mm. uh, her, her, her papa, 
an older man with a, a, mu- a graying mustache, clearly a southern gentleman for which the restaurant was named after. Uh, as, as the gentleman uh, entered the bar, Annabelle's father, Ignatius, beckoned to her. Annabelle, help this gentleman, please. Right away, Papa. And that gentleman um, was a uh, man in his early 20s, just over six feet tall, uh, with a lean build, um, dark jet black hair, and uh, Kelly green eyes. He hadn't eaten for days. By choice. (laughs) (laughs) He has has a pack full of food, but he chose not to... You know what? On account of it being Ramadan. Well, ha- how about this? It's Lent. Oh, and, kind of being Lent. Uh, he would be Catholic. And all he had in his... Yeah, and all he has in his pack is, like, jerky. And you can't eat meat during Lent, so... All he had was jerky and pocket Lent. And you're not going to eat pocket Lent during Lent. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> such a fundamental misunderstanding of Catholicism. It's over. I'm gone. I'm sorry. We can stop. This was a dumb idea. <laughs> <laughs> Pick it up again tomorrow, guys. Sorry. We'll try again tomorrow. Maybe it won't be such a shit show. Alright. Uh, Alright, pack it up. Uh, pack it up, pack it in. Let me begin. Huddle St. Patrick just walked in. That's us in. <laughs> uh, well, how to strange it. Take a seat right over here. I'll get your fried eggs. Come up right away. Thank you kindly. And for long, back the day. fried eggs are out. And even before longer, they were joined by another. In walked Sam Goodwin, uh, five foot seven, salt and pepper hair, best looking sop bones you see in this part of town. Oh, Sam dear, you're here for your morning breakfast? Come right here, we got your table. Thanks, Annabelle. The usual spam sandwich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and tell your dad. To go easy on the grease. I'll tell him, but I don't think he'll listen. Well, I heard him just fine, Annabelle, and no, I will not. <laughs> that is how God intended these to be made. Hey, Lassie, would it be possible for me to get some coffee over here? Do you want anything in your coffee? Sugar? Cream? I shake the whiskey bottle and I say, I've got my own edition right here. Uh, I disapprove of this early in the morning, sir, but I'll bring it right out. It might be early in the morning for you, lass, but I've been up since uh, 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Hey, Annabelle, I'll take some sugar, if you know what I mean. Oh, Sam, you're incorrigible. The joviality of this conversation was broken. At about that time, another person entered the southern gentleman who would change these people's lives forever uh annabelle looked over at this newcomer uh she was a squat figure tiny hunched over clearly uh, an older woman she had a shawl wrapped about her with the bright rainbowish colors that were common to the uh hispanic folk of the area as she stepped in uh it was clear that she herself was a Mexican. Huddle looks and thinks, well, that's someone that'll be changing my life forever. (laughs) (laughs) She spoke, Estoy buscando para mi hijo. Estoy buscando para mi hijo. Ayúdame, por favor. Uh, Sam takes a half of this ether rag. Uh, She spoke to no one in particular as she stepped through the restaurant, going to each table individually with her hands out. Ayúdame, por favor. Estoy buscando para mi hijo. Tengo dinero. Necesito ayuda. Papa, you speak Spanish, don't you? Why, a smattering here and there. Is there a Mexican customer? <laughs> there sure is. <laughs> <laughs> Ignatius came up to the front of the bar to speak to the woman. Hello, Tengo Huevos y Tengo Ranchon. Realizing that she was not understood, uh, she changed to broken English. Everyone, hello. I need help. Uh, what kind of help, dear? I'm looking for my son. He came through here, I hear, a long time ago. Uh, how long ago? 
maybe 10 years? Uh, me and my papa were not out here 10 years ago, so we cannot help you. I just rode in this morning. Uh, sorry, can't be a more help. Is there anyone who's been here for, for 10 years? What's it look like? I have a photograph of him. She, uh, she, she fumbles through uh, her, her shawl. A photograph? Annabelle exclaimed excitedly. That's one of them fancy high-tech pictures. What's like an oil painting, but done much quicker. Are you rich or something? No, he took it when he was vaquero. The woman continued to search through her belongings. Before long, she retrieved with a shaky hand an old grainy photograph. Old even by the standards of the time. (laughs) This was made right after the camera was invented. It was the first (laughs) photograph. Yellowed and dusting, she held up the (laughs) photograph so that everyone could see. This all I have of him. He sent to me after he left. He said he's doing well and he finds silver. Uh, did he say where he found the silver? He said he come here, Baker Hill. He stopped writing and so I followed him. I scraped up my money. Sam in his intoxicated, in his intoxicated form does not recognize the picture. She's showing the picture around to you guys. Annabelle admired the photograph where she had never seen one. Huddle is interested in uh, the idea that there might be silver around these parts. Um, and he's got it in his head to uh, chat up the Sawbones, who's been here for a while, uh, about the silver. Uh, so he... I Are we all like kind of gathered around at this point? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep, everyone's... At, a, at that point, everyone gathered around the old woman... Not only to look at the wonder of a photograph, but to figure out what she meant by this silver. Ignatius was the first to speak. I, I don't recall ever seeing this man. Well, why would you, Papa? We were down in Louisiana. Yes, ten years ago we had not yet moved here. In fact, the only one who I remember that was still here, other than the good doctor, was, well, maybe Rosie at the Double Dixie. Uh, Huddle turns to the doctor and he says, uh... Well, what exactly is this town built for, anyway? Is there an industry here, or, like, what's what's the deal? Rumors of a railroad coming through soon. This town was built because it's about a day's ride from the nearest town, and another day's ride from the next nearest, just a crossroads at the time. I do hear tell that there was once a mining operation around here, though it's been derelict for some time. Perhaps that's what the young woman is referring to. The only young thing I see is Annabelle. I will stop at you. I'd thank you to keep your eyes off of her, Doctor. Sam took another whiff from his rag. It's <laughs> out <in> the open. <laughs> <laughs> you don't care. So why was the mine closed down, I wonder? Well, I'm sure I don't know. As my lovely daughter here just said, we had not yet moved here. Why don't you go ask Rosie? All I know is, when it closed, I had less customers, or patience, <laughs> patience, I had less patience. They're all the same to you, aren't they, Mr. Sawbones? Well, yeah, just about. Uh, so his, his head full of... Thoughts of Silver, Huddle, um, stands up and uh, looks at the um, Hispanic lady and says, um, What's your name, ma'am? My name is Maria Lopez. Uh, I'm from Michoacan. And your son's name? What What was that? His name is Ernesto. Not Lopez. Jorge? <laughs> Not George Lopez? I'm sorry? <laughs> Can it please be George Lopez? Can I flip a light side point to make it George Lopez? How did you know his middle name? (laughs) See, his name is Ernesto Jorge Lopez. Right then. Well, I, uh, Miss Lopez, I'll be doing my very best to recover your lost son. And perhaps we'll find a little bit of silver along the way. And, um... I have money if you find him. 
Yes, that that'd be all right too. And she, about that time, fumbled through her belongings again, pulling out a handful of pesos. Not enough to buy two eggs. <laughs> uh, uh, Huddle takes the pesos and puts them down to pay for his eggs and then quickly leaves the restaurant. Uh, sir, that was not enough to pay for two eggs. Oh, can't hear you. I'm mm. already too far away. Goodbye. Huddle St. Patrick stepped out into the day again. And it was clear to the audience now that he was a real bastard. Uh, yeah, he didn't pay for the whiskey either. He just walked right out with that whiskey bottle. What a real bastard. Papa, should I go get the sheriff? If anything bad was going to happen, it was going to happen to this man. Well, somebody running out on eggs. I suppose you'd better summon old Jebediah. Eggs and whiskey. She don't know Wait. that that whiskey's stolen. Eggs and coffee. The whiskey's no matter to me. <laughs> coffee. My bad. Coffee? Now that I do take offense with. Coffee is one of the finest substances created by the Lord above. All right, all so to she ran on it. over to the sheriff's. Okay. I love how this southern gentleman is, like, oscillating between 1950s Americana and Louisiana. Yeah, you keep nine voices straight in your head, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep a spreadsheet. In response Duh. to the stolen eggs and the coffee that the gentleman had run out on. I paid with them pesos. Old Annabelle ran over to the jail. Oh, Sheriff Mossman. Sheriff Mossman, are you in there? Yes, Annabelle. I'm uh, in here. She walked inside. <laughs> Annabelle stepped inside and there he stood Sheriff Mossman The law around these parts So long as these parts doesn't include Taking out the trash at the Dixie uh, She took in the spectacle that was Mossman What does he look like? Sheriff Mossman was a hulk of a man He stood near seven feet tall Jesus One of the largest engines anybody had ever laid eyes on his uh, his long black hair tied back in a ponytail, and he kept a rifle, not nearly half as big as he was, strapped to his back. Something that a lesser man would have struggled to maintain. Wait, did you say not nearly half long as he was? <laughs> not nearly. It wasn't even half as big as he is. So it's a small gun. It would have been big for a regular. No, he's just a no, big it's guy. a big gun. But the guy's seven feet tall. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So like a normal a sized rifle. rifle. A normal-sized rifle strung to his back. <laughs> <laughs> he made his giant frame made it look Annabelle, like a piece. Annabelle, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, sir. But we had a ruffian in in our restaurant earlier, and he only paid part of his tab and ran off. I was wondering if you would wouldn't mind helping me out. Must have been in there since the Dixie's not quite open yet. All right. What did he look like? Uh, he had black hair, he was a uh, skinny build, and he had Kelly green eyes, and he talked with an Irish accent. An Irishman, huh? I suppose. You sure he didn't steal any booze from you? Uh, <laughs> not that I know of. He didn't order any, okay, at least. Okay, well, I'll be on the lookout for him. Do you know where he went? And, did you see his horse? <laughs> I did not see his horse, but I saw he was running off towards, um... Fuck, where was it? I'm I'm heading back. I was heading back to the Dixie to talk to Rosie. Right. He was heading towards Rosie. Rosie at the Dixie. Very well, thank you. I'll intercept him there. Sheriff Mossman and uh, Old Annabelle went over to the Dixie together. There they found the ruffian's horse. Sheriff Mossman placed a hand on the horse's flank. Still warm. He's been here recently. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Annabelle rolled her eyes. Mm, yes. You know, if I'm going to go in there, I think it'd be best if I had old uh, Mr. Goodwin with me. I always feel better with the sawbones at my side. <laughs> Sam was still at the restaurant eating the Wordlessly, she ran back to the southern gentleman. Before long, Annabelle, Goodwin, and... Ignatius, every time I come in here, I 
feels like you're trying to kill me. No, <laughs> Mr. Food. Goodwin, you are doing that yourself with that horrid addiction that you have. We'll see what kills me first. All this grease or my ether. Oh, Annabelle, good to see you. I'm glad you've returned. Did you summon the sheriff? Yes, Papa, but I need to get Sam for him now. What the devil does he need Sam for? That's a strange contrivance. I don't know. Maybe to push along the story or something. Hmm. Well, if he needs a certain <laughs> cast of characters at a certain location, I can't begrudge him. <laughs> Sam, would you be a dear and accompany me over to Dixie? Anything. And for Sam, you. of course, it's on the house. Thank you for helping me with my impotence. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. You're not there. You're oh, not there. oof, oof. That's a lot to unpack. <laughs> what you don't know is Sam and Ignatius are best buds, and they like to joke around and yeah. mock each other yeah. every day. You know, they're always. He just mocks himself, he calls himself Baron, <laughs> and himself. Sam got up and. Left his usual tip on the table anyway. Who leaves with Annabelle? Yeah. Left his yeah. Lo- it's loafed. Left his loafed. <laughs> he loafed. He loafed. He loafed his usual tip. So, uh, the, the three set off, heading towards the Double Dixie. The very structure that had caused so much grief for the people of this town was about to cause a little more. Inside the Dixie, old St. Patrick was speaking with Rosie again. Just like this morning, but a little food in his belly now to calm his evil temperament. Wow, there's just a... I'm feeling a lot of judgment coming from the voice of God in this. Oh, good to see you again, stranger. Did you get some uh, grub in your tongue? I did, and I feel miles better. I have a question for you, though. Yes, speak as you would. What, uh, what was this town known for, exactly? I mean, I know it's about today's ride from... Uh, the town out east, but uh, what what sort of industry keeps this place afloat apart from this casino? Well, uh, at about this time, it's just the casino. M- Mr. Helmet runs the casino. He used to have him on an old mining operation, and before that, we was just a regular old crossroads. was not a whole lot that kept this town afloat. Interesting. And what happened to that mining? Did they close it down for some reason? Uh, the mine? Yeah, they they closed it down about ten years ago. You know, it's actually kind of strange. Uh, Mr. Helma, he said he struck silver. And, uh, uh, maybe maybe a week or two after that, he just closed up shop. In fact, he kicked people out of there so quick that if you go to the old mine today, their camps is still there. Some of their pots still got food in them. He just, he kicked everybody out, said no one works this mine no more. There's been food in those pots for ten years? That's, that's so much uneaten food. Yeah, pretty strange. I mean, I don't know, I can't speak to the food. I've never been there myself. Well, you, you just uh, said that there's still food in those pots. Those, it's here, how say, many pots? It, it, frontier gossip. Uh, which way was this mine you said? Uh, the mine? The, the, the silver mine? Yes. The canyon load? <laughs> That's one exactly. Uh, alright, well, take a little walk with me. Rosie put her arm around the racist Irishman's shoulder and led him outside. What is this con- <laughs> There's just so much aggression. <laughs> Shh, just roll with it. <laughs> you gotta need more bases, uh, just do it pointing up the hill behind the casino she said see that there that's baker hill the very hill that this town is named after and you see that building up there that's mr helmet's mansion behind that well it's private property but there's a canyon there and that's what leads back to his old uh, canyon load where he struck his silver and he still he still owns the deed to that canyon does he Yes, he certainly does. In fact, he actually built the mansion shortly after he shut down that mine. And uh, he, he insisted they keep it like a little ghost town back there. And they say he used the money from the, the, the silver load to build uh, the, this here Dixie. 
And that's when I stopped working at that old uh, Southern Gentleman and came and I was the bartender here. I thought the Southern Gentleman wasn't around until uh, that fine, uh, finely dressed Southern Gentleman and his daughter came and lived here. <laughs> that That is correct. The, the three of us uh, came into town around the same time and it was just about the time the mine was closing. I worked very briefly at the Southern Gentleman uh, and then as soon as it closed, that's about the time the Dixie opened. You see, building this thing didn't happen overnight. <laughs> You'd think it almost did on account of how shoddy it is in some places, but, uh... Yeah. Uh, all that happened around the same time. And, um, just to help my, uh, my little mental, um, picture, Baker's Hill, is it, like, the only hill? Like, could I have not missed it, or... Yeah, there's yeah, it's like so clearly uh, the hill that is the Baker's Like hill. if there was ever going to be a mine anywhere near this town, that is the only place it could be. Absolutely. Well, um confident he has a good idea where a boatload of silver is and eager to get help obtaining that silver, um Huddle turns around to make his way uh back to um, the southern gentleman to perhaps try to enlist the help of the doctor and the young waitress lady. Cool. I'm going to go ask that waitress <laughs> on an adventure. <laughs> cool. Uh, so the two of them uh, head back inside uh, through the kitchen. The most direct route, of course, through the kitchen and then the front of the casino. Um, as they... As the two of them reached the front of the casino, Rosie reminded the Irish stranger, Oh, hey, uh, you actually ran off earlier without paying for that, uh, whiskey. Oh, my mistake. I thought it was on the house. And he... And of course, I... Yeah, you, you, you were hungry. You needed to get over. I, I, I understand. We all get a little forgetful when we got, uh, food on our tongue. Um, or on our mind. Yeah, so he, he reaches into his pocket and pulls out silver dollar or however much this whiskey was sure a, a tuppence yeah cool so yeah he he drops the he drops some coins on the bar as he heads out thank you kindly sir i'd hate to have to send sheriff mossman after you he can be a real brute uh at that moment sheriff mossman the doctor and annabelle morell stepped into the bar that's it, Mr. Mossman. And hell followed with him. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for listening to the first episode of Goofs and Goblins. I hope you liked what you heard. We are on the web. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook at Goofs and Goblins. Spell it out, no ampersand. Make sure you subscribe, give us five stars, leave a review about how funny we are, or, I don't know, maybe tell us something negative, how obnoxious you think our voices are. At this point, we're, we're really looking for any kind of feedback at all. So, yeah, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll catch you in two weeks.